All right, in problems like this, we're going to solve 4x, and it doesn't matter what these look like. Notice we have two absolute values. Please, please do not be afraid of these. It looks far more complicated than it is. Uh, it's, it's not that bad. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Uh, it just may take some it just may take some getting used to all right so if you don't understand it right away don't feel stupid it's just part of the way the math works okay and remember what we talked about in terms of schema please all right so just as if this was a regular equality meaning uh, if we were just to ignore these absolute values like this right well we would solve this the same way as if those absolute values were there. It doesn't matter if we take them away or if we don't take them away. So, what does this mean? It means that we're going to split this up into two separate inequalities. Now, just in terms of pure repetition, I highly recommend keeping the left part of the equal sign the same, meaning uh, we're not going to worry about changing the signs on these, okay? Now, what this means, though, is that this is going to equal the other equation, 3x plus 5, but also the opposite of 3x plus 5. Sorry, I kind of crammed that in there. Now we're just going to solve these like we would any regular equation. This one's going to be very easy to solve, but this one just became a little complicated because there's that phantom one there that we need to distribute into the parentheses. Notice all that does is it changes it from 3x plus 5 to a negative 3x minus 5. And we didn't do anything to that left side of the equal sign. On this other equation, we could subtract 5 from both sides, and that's okay. Just keep in mind that not only will it cancel this 5 out, but it also canceled this other one out, okay? So we really have negative 4x equals 3x. So in order to get rid of that 3x, we would subtract 3x from both sides. Not that it matters if you added 4x. Uh, it, if you added 4x, you just have a positive 7x. But the way that I did it, I've got a negative 7x. Then when I divide both sides by 7, it's not going to change anything. It just tells us that x must be 0. So that's our first answer. It was brought up in class as well that since we have two absolute values, will we have four answers? The answer is no, because it doesn't matter what's in here or in here, positive or negative. We're still only going to have one answer for each. Okay, which is why we changed the sign here. Let's go and look at that second equation. So at this point, uh, I would probably add 4x to both sides, uh, just to change it up in this case. And then I would add 5 to both sides. I know I'm doing two steps at once. I hope that's okay with you. That gives us a 0 there and there as well. So we have now 5 plus 5 is 10 equals negative 3x plus 4x is a 1x, but I don't need that 1. And that would finish off that problem, x is 10. Now once again, I would highly recommend going back to this original equation, replacing the x with 0, and then solving to make sure it is a true statement. Then I would go to this x equals 10, replace the x's with 10, and make sure that I have a true statement.